Hi, good morning. Goddess Mona here. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel, Goddess Mona. Yes, I'm a sexologist. Thank you. I want to make sure that you actually do click and subscribe to my channel and tell anyone that you know that needs spiritual guidance to check into Goddess Mona. So let's get into the topics, the reason why we came here today. Several things, but I want to keep it clear. We're always talking about the law of attraction. I use the law of attraction every point of my life in every way. And I just want to share some news that's been going on and some things I can share and some things that are opening up that I can't share yet, but I'm excited about it. Okay, so the first thing was... I do voiceover work for studios and voiceover work is just like if there is a song that needs to be sung or they have, they wrote a song and they need me to sing it. But with this particular gentleman, and I want to say thank you so much for finding me. He, we worked together like two years ago. He lost his phone, didn't have my number, and had been looking for me for months, he said. I couldn't find you. I don't know. But anyways, God led him back to me. And so two days ago, I went back into the studio and I started singing uh, for him again back into the studio. So that was really great. And I manifested that by thinking, man, whatever happened to this gentleman in TA that I used to work with? I love that work. So easy. And um, just one thing that I manifested, it happened two days ago, I did go back into the studio and start recording. Also, people are calling me, wanting, I have a interview coming up with someone, I'll tell you guys more about that and maybe broadcast live from the, from the, uh, from the actual interview. I'll be on a radio station talking about, you know, what I do, being a sex coach and a sexologist and, um, you know, talking to people about spiritual sex and the law of attraction. Spiritual sex and the law of attraction goes hand in hand. Hand. It's all about the God within. It's all about nurturing. You guys can see me better. It's all about nurturing the God self inside of you. Now, if you are the kind of person who don't believe in the law of attraction, have never heard of it, I want to tell you what the law of attraction is. Law of attraction simply is using your third eye, your pineal gland here. There's a crystal inside of there. It's just using your pineal gland, your God self. God is in your thoughts. God is your thoughts. Every thought, every word, every emotion that you have, even your emotions are silent prayers to the universe, into the ether. So if you are a person who wants to manifest a new job, you want to manifest a lover. I hope my headlights are not on. You want to manifest um, leaving your job and actually, um, <laughs> and you know, working start working for yourself. I'll come up a little bit because I know that can be distracting. I don't I don't wear bras and I'm top heavy, so I don't want people just be like staring at my my headlights. So. You want to create something that you love. What you do is in meditation and meditate. We can go over meditation. I just did a live on how to meditate because I get a lot of requests on how do I meditate? What do you do when you meditate? It's very simple. And you can go to the previous video, but it's really simple. Um, what you want to do is you want to... When you wake up in the morning, go into your five-minute meditation. You can go as long as you like, but you only need five minutes to meditate in the morning to really create the life that you love. And you want to see your day the way you want it to go in your mind with your eyes closed in a quiet environment and play out in your mind how your day should go. That's how you do meditation in the morning. First thing is you want to thank God and be in gratitude that you woke up, okay, and that you're in your right mind. That's the first thing. Once you do that, you want to construct your day, basically. You want to go through your day. What would you normally do? You got to get up and go to work. You're going to run it through your mind, go to work, see things going really well, see, you know, yourself getting, you know, your day going just the way you want it. Maybe you want to attract money. You want to see a certain amount of money coming to yourself. What I do is that I imagine what I have several, several quotas that I have for my business. So I say I'll either want to hit number one, number two, or number three. What do I feel like today? And I put that amount into the ether. I say it. I see the money coming in. And I say, thank you for bringing the money in from sources known and unknown. Because you don't want to just stifle how your money come in. You want it to just let it flow the way it wants to go. <laughs> I know I do. I'm like, come in any way you want. <laughs> I'm open to receive it. <laughs> And so that's just me. I'm like, come in however you want it, whether that's a lunch from someone. And then one of my clients just texts me and say, hey, let me take you to lunch. And I'm like, yeah, okay, because my people know I'm a foodie. However, I'm a different foodie now since I became a vegan, and we'll talk about that. Um, 
that's a whole nother topic. I mean, I feel amazing. I got rid of that double chin that I had. You know, my body starts to tone up the way it's supposed to with the workout that I'm doing. I don't have all this aggression like I used to have when I'm trying to meditate. I have all these crazy thoughts coming at me about dog, cats, and all kinds of stuff. You know, just crazy emotions. When you eat meat, the, the emotions from the meat is actually in your body. You consume it and sit in your colon trying to process, trying to think what the hell does she want me to do with this? And especially if you eat meat for every meal, breakfast, lunch, a snack, dinner, you know, you got a lot of energy coming at you from so many different sources. And then you want to know why this looks crazy when I have this, but I'm just like cold at my desk. So I'm just trying to be comfortable. Um, you have a lot of energy coming at you. So anyway, just as something to consider. So all I want to say is I've attracted some really amazing things and I also want to show you I keep this check at my desk uh, how I attracted this $18,000 check came from the state as you can see the state of Texas and how I did that was I used the law of attraction I didn't even know at that time that I was using the law of attraction I just kept saying wouldn't it be nice if a huge lump sum of money would just come into me? It does I don't have to know where it's coming from, but I don't owe anyone anything. And the money came in right when I needed it for something. Oh, this was years ago when I did my tummy tuck. Okay, I had a tummy. I was like, you know, trying to work it out and wouldn't go down. It was the flabby skin from gaining weight, losing weight, having children. It was just a mess. And I was like, I can't live like this. Okay, so I wanted to, you know, in our minds we think that we can't do some things and then we limit ourselves. I say, well, this. This one thing I can do somehow I have to figure out how to get this flabby skin off my stomach so I needed money the money came in and there you go okay so it's all about our thinking guys it's all about if you believe that something great is gonna happen to you and I've always felt that way when I was little, I used to say I'm gonna be famous somehow I don't know how I don't know if it's gonna be doing music and I want to be a singer I didn't know what that was gonna look like all I knew is that I wanted to be somebody special and I wanted to give the world something special. I wanted to be able to help people and I didn't know what that was going to look like. I didn't know that going into a 12-year relationship with someone on and off uh, and not in love with yourself can make you grow, grow, grow. Let me tell you what happened. I like to be authentic about it because I know a lot of women are dealing with this. A lot of men are in relationships that are not serving them. If you're in a relationship with someone who doesn't honor you, they just don't. They don't know how. You can try to teach somebody how to love you all day long and by showing them how you love yourself. And the person saw, I love myself. I do really good things for myself. However, I didn't realize I wasn't in love with the God self in me. The God self in me wouldn't allow a man to come into my life who would never kiss me. I just want to be authentic on what I accepted in this relationship. It was not cute, guys. It was not. I, I accepted things uh, from the relationship that I myself would never accept looking outside, looking in. I would like, oh, hell no. He's not a kisser. Boy, sit down somewhere. <laughs> anyway, I was with a man who is a non-kisser. Imagine being in a relationship and in love with a person who would never come up to you and kiss you in the mouth. That's what I thought. The point is... <laughs> He also uh, was, I just don't want to talk about him because I don't, he's not a bad person. He really isn't a lovely person. He has a big heart. Um, just, we love different. I love one way. I'm affectionate, romantic. I'm sensual. I'm sexual. I want to make love to my husband every day. That wasn't a problem, but it is a problem if you want to make love to your man and look them in the eyes and connect with them because the eyes are the seat of the soul. And you can never connect with him through the eyes because you can't even kiss. You know, so I accepted a man who wouldn't even look at me when we're making love. It's like, I don't know if he, what he was thinking about or whatever else, but he, he was just fine. And come to find out, it wasn't him. He has a syndrome called the Asperger's. Have you ever heard of Asper, Asperger's or Asperger's? I think it's Asperger's. But it's a syndrome that the person has, and they have the inability to give you affection to give you love, give you words of affirmation, to hug you, to kiss you, uh, to show you even emotions. They are emotionless. 
They don't have the DNA inside of them to show you, like, if I would be sitting there crying, I'm not a crier, I never cry about anything, really. He's like, you never cry. I was like, for what? I'm happy. <laughs> so, if, anyway, if I was sad about something, he doesn't have the ability to say, oh, sweetie, what's wrong? What can I do to help you or to hold you and console you and say, oh, you know what? It's going to be okay. They, he doesn't have that kind of gene inside of him. That's who I dated for 12 long years. Now, let me tell you, even with him being that way, still it's not his fault. He, you know, can work on it if he decides to. He decides he's, that's not something that concerns him. He's not going to work on that. That's why I can't be with him anymore. And I think, I thought all these years, I want to be with somebody that, you know, I have tenure with. You know, I, I kept trying to work it out. Like, we've been together all this time. Let's work it out. Let's work through it. But... I mean, you can only go so far if a person won't kiss you, won't give you words of affirmation. They are not growing. You have to look at what, what is making me stay. You know, why am I not serving myself? Why am I not giving myself the love I deserve? So I got out of the relationship. I finally decided, you know what? This is the year. I can't do it anymore. And I'm, you know, we're, we're not together any longer. And he wants to be together. But I can't do it anymore now because he's still the same person. So if I'm growing and you're not growing and I just can't do it. So the point is now that that has come to me and I've realized, oh, so this I finally found out about this syndrome. And I'm like, oh, so he's this is never going to change. And that's the only reason why I still feel bad about breaking up with him and really going my own way. And I haven't started dating anybody, but I'm about to start dating and I haven't dated outside of this relationship uh, you know, because I was in love with him. I thought we were going to be together, be together forever. But that is not going to be the case because I can't go the rest of my life without being kissed and told that I'm beautiful. He doesn't even have words of, you're beautiful, you're wonderful, you smell good, you taste good, come here, let's make love, or, you know, let's do it on the floor. It's You're never going to get any of those things. So I'm really open-minded, spontaneous. I love to make love. I want to make love to my man every day as much as possible because that's a way to connect with your lover and it's healthy. It's good exercise. <laughs> you feel great. You can create anything that you want when you make in love with your partner and you're both in love and you're both creating that love feeling and you're both on the same vibration about what you want to create in your life. You can make the most amazing love making sessions and then start seeing magic come into your life, okay? Just for making love. And I want to create that with my lover. So that's what I'm working on, and which means I'm working on myself. I'm back in school getting my doctorate in metaphysical science and working on my body, working on my mind, my, my vibration. When I wake up in the morning, I feel great just to know that I have an opportunity to meet a new guy, to meet somebody who will say, Mona, you're amazing. Mona, you're beautiful. And I don't need to hear those things. I desire to hear those things because those things I tell myself through learning self-love, you learn that you could be in a relationship with someone and think that they love you and they just very well might love you, but they don't know how to love you the way you need to be loved. Consider that. If you're affectionate and you want to be kissed and you want to be held and you want to be told that you're lovely and that you're beautiful and you get those things. So there are five love languages and I'm sure you guys probably heard of this. If you haven't, cannot remember the guy's name who wrote the book. Hello, something or the other, and it just escapes my mind. But just look up the five love languages. And when I read the book, I realized, yeah, you're right. I'm the kind of person who enjoys words of encouragement, uh, words of love, words of affirmation. I mean, I'm a Virgo, so we want to be told, hey, you're doing a great job. You know what I'm saying? Because we always are nurturers. We want to take care of you and take care of the world and take care of everybody. That's why I'm a healer. I do Reiki. I'm a Tantra sex coach. I, I work with couples and singles all over the world. I'm also an empath. You know, so I work with crystals. I do Oracle card readings. Where am I? Oracle card. I do Oracle card readings for people. So if you need a goddess, Oracle card reading, these cards are magical. They will really help you to, um, figure it out what it is that you want to do. And I just may do a reading now. I'm just thinking this just may be a really good time to do a reading because I like to do them on my social media pages. If you want to uh, follow me on any of my social media pages, I'm at Goddess Mona, Dr. Goddess Mona. And you'll be able to find me on Instagram or um, 
on Facebook or whatever. So what I do with my cards is I hold them, I put them in my hand because I bond with them, and I'm going to clear the energy from them. Then I go into asking the universe, what is it that you want me to know today? What should I know? What should I be doing? What energy? I know my energy is always good, but what should I be vibrating at today? What should be on my mind, basically? You know, what is, what is it that I need to know? So I shift them. And I'll keep shifting them in different ways until the universe tells me to stop. And I'll just ask the question. What do you want me to know today? And then I'll read these cards out and I'll give them to you because not only are the card readings for me, but they are for you too. So this is how I shift my cards sometimes. That way I can really get them mixed up really good. And I'll keep going until the universe tells me to stop, which is now. I pull up three cards. And I'll lay these back in the box. How I lay them out is, I'm gonna pull the first one from the top. I, you see how the crown is upside, it's upside, it's right side up. If you pull it and it's upside down, this means whatever the card says, there is a block there, okay? So this one came upside down because I just pulled it from the stack and I'll lay it there. Now the first one, it says medicine woman. See that one? And the card says, you are a channel for divine healing power. And that I am, okay? And so, that's the first card. And that was upside down. So, that means really pay attention to this card that there is an opening, a clearing, or a block that's being cleared. And I know that my block is being cleared because I am totally uh, a divine healing power, you know. I'm a channel for divine healing power. The second one is inner wisdom. My goddess Athena. Okay, and this was by Excel. Goddess Excel, Excel. And it says Medicine Woman at the top. That was the first one. The second one, it says, you know what to do. Trust your inner wisdom and take uh, appropriate action without delay. I don't know who this is for, but it's for me as well too. You know what to do. Take appropriate action. I'll read it again. You know what to do. Trust your inner wisdom. So that's the thing. A lot of people don't trust themselves. We don't trust people. We definitely don't trust ourselves sometimes because of things we've done in the past and made us think like, I can't trust my own judgment. But you can. This card is telling you, trust your inner wisdom and then take appropriate actions without delay. Okay? And the last one is Infinite Supply by Goddess Setna. Okay? And it reads, you are supplied for your today and all of your tomorrows. And who doesn't want that? I know I do. You are supplied for today and all of your tomorrows. Why? Because you are the infinite spirit of the universe. God is always, always, always supplying us all that we need if we believe that. If you believe that you're supplied for today and tomorrow. I tell myself every morning when I wake up, thank you God for always supplying all of my needs. For always giving me everything that I need. And whatever I need comes to me. I don't, And I thank you that I don't have to struggle. Thank you that my life is easy, that I have this beautiful home. I have, you know, my cars that are paid for. They may not be the newest cars, but they are paid for. Okay? So, and then, you know, all the other opportunities that are coming to me. I just I just stay in an attitude of gratitude. And I'm always grateful for any little thing. Any, any little thing that comes to me, I'm trying to find a way to give pleasure, give love to someone. Okay? So, I wanted to go... I just I hope that that card reading really helps someone because again, medicine woman, it is you are a channel for divine healing and power, and we all are. Just because I'm a healer and I help people with tantric sex and kama sutra sex and sex education and teaching sex classes. If you do need a sex class, all you have to do is go to my website goddessmona.info, and all my classes are there. And you can you can do a class online. I can Skype with you. We can set up. A, um, a YouTube session. We can do any type of way that, you know, you can, I have an iPhone, so we can do it any type of way that you need. But I also do these, these readings the same way. 
Very, very, very accurate. My daughter, when I started doing it for her, she come in every day and say, Mom, I need a reading. Okay, I need to know what's going on. I need a reading. So, <laughs> she's 19 and she loves her reading. She's like, where is my reading? And so now my, my family and my friends are catching on to it because they say those cards were so accurate. It said exactly what I needed to hear. And also... How did it know what I was going through? How did it know? It just does. It's how the universe works. So those were your card readings for today. I hope that it blessed your soul. See those again. Hope you can read them. Okay. So I want to be clear again about the law of attraction, how I even attracted these cards. I wanted to be able to give my clients something more too, to add onto my spa. And I attracted these at the bookstore at my church, at my, my worship center where I sing at. And uh, Unity of Houston, if you need to know where to find these. It's Unity of Houston Bookstore in Houston. It's a, an amazing worship center, um, all about the law of attraction and all about oneness, oneness with God and that the God that we love that we think is in the sky is actually inside of us and that's what they actually we don't even use bibles at our church we don't because we know that the bible like god said we are the church the bible is inside of us so we don't have to go to a book that was made up by people to say this is the truth this is where it is not so so anyway we won't go into that anymore but the law of attraction guys is always working how you get the law of attraction to work for you how i attract money is like i said i meditate on it i write it down i make things clear okay i actually have my little cards that i read in the morning and I write true statements about myself like, through the God power within me, my consciousness has risen above the consciousness of creating love, which is mine now. My love and I are together in physical form and in spirit. Here's another one. I now direct my mind to the place within my mind that contains the karmic cause behind my present problem. Whatever you have a problem of, it's really not a problem. It's only a problem because you say it is. If you decide to take whatever that situation is and say, you know what, this can be looked at in a different way, then it will be looked at into a different way. Okay? And these cards, I, what I do is I label them. This one says health, right? And then I'll put all the health affirmations that I want to say behind it. So for people who are having problems in their body, this is the affirmation that I give to, it's a prescription. These are prescriptions that I give to myself and I read them every day. And I actually prescribe these to my clients, the people that I work with. So this was about health. So let me go into the affirmation for you. You can write it down, re-record this. Whatever you do, I'm going to try to say it as slow as possible. All the nerves, the cells, tissue, organs of my body are now attuned to the perfect harmony of nature and the universal mind of God within me. The mental cause behind any physical ailment is, um, is removed from all levels of my mind by the mind of God, okay, and the universe within me. All cells in my body are reborn to health, perfection, as ordained by the universal mind of God within me. Is that powerful or what, okay? You are directing these prayers to tell your body. Because, you know, when you tell your body, I'm sick, I'm not sick. You, when you say things with I am, that is a prayer and guarantee whatever that I am you spoke is about to manifest in your life. So I wake up in the morning and I say, I am beautiful, I am whole. I even taught this to my mother because she had a stroke. And I taught this to her. So you say, I can't move my arm, I can't move my leg. I say, yeah, you can. If you can tell your body, I'm whole. I'm healthy. I'm in the perfect divine alignment with the universe because I am, because God is within me. Remember, this says the mental cause behind any ailment is removed from all levels of my mind by the mind of God. Okay? And the universal and a universe within me, because there are several uni there are universes within each of us, okay? So you can direct your mind and your body to say, I'm healthy and I'm whole. I tell myself that I get younger every single day. I feel good. I am good. Everything that I want, I already have. So now this was meditation. You see that? I write meditation down. So then what follows that after meditation is 
spiritual self analysis. See the card? What's on this card is, if you're going to do a self analysis, these are the questions you're going to ask yourself. What is it, what in my thinking brought about the present situation? You know, if you are going through something, you have to sit back and think, what am I thinking? What in my thinking process brought about this present situation? Because everything that you are experiencing, you have thought about, which means you brought about. Okay, I'm just telling you how it is. If you brought about some kind of condition in your body and your money, your finances, trust me, I go through my own thing too. And I'm constantly re, re I'm constantly focusing on what am I thinking? You know, am I thinking positive thoughts? So all day I'm thinking, I'm good, I'm great, I'm wonderful, I'm whole, I'm healthy, I am wealth, I am abundance, I'm love, I'm spirituality, I am here to help, I'm here to serve. You'll want to give yourself those type of affirmations because if you're walking around thinking negative thoughts of what you're not and what you don't have, then you're going to bring more of that situation to yourself. So that's one thing I want to share with you. Number two is we're still talking about spiritual self-analysis. What is my inner God self trying to tell me about making positive new changes in my life? Right? That's this video. You, you attracted this video if you're watching it. If you are, let me read the question again just one more time so we can get it in. What is the inner God within, what is the inner God self trying to tell me about making positive new changes in my life? God always is sending us ways, people, circumstances to show us that the inner God that is, that is inside of us wants a higher calling wants us to do something in particular or several things in particular that you were designed to do so if your inner god self is nagging at you about something like you want to start your own business or you want to take up a dance class or you want to have a baby or you want to get married whatever that thing is your god self is going to continue to tell you those things your feelings are going to continue to be in that space until you start working on it to manifest it just so you know that's how this works Okay, let's keep going. What in my life no longer serves me as it once did? Whether it's a job, a relationship, um, whatever it is, though your weight, your health, what in your life no longer serves you as it once did? So that's something for you to think about. What am I still experiencing in my life that I just don't care to experience anymore? For me, it was that relationship. It was so, relationships are very, very, very important to me. I'm a family-oriented person. Um, I'm all about family. Like, that's number one for me, besides, you know, my God self and my God universe. Um, my family is very important to me. So in my relationship, you know, I was taught that your husband is, you know, should be the most important part per person in your life, you know, outside of your children, your family. And so I put a lot of energy into that relationship and it was still not serving me. And I kept thinking, well, try harder, try something different. And I tried everything and nothing worked. So that's just to let you know that is called a karmic relationship. So I'm now actually teaching on that. So everything that you go through, it's not a set it's, it's not to set you back. It's to set you up for something great. And I became a sex coach because of that relationship. I became a love coach because of that relationship. I am now getting my doctorate in metaphysics because of that relationship. I teach blowjobs because of that relationship. I teach sex education because of that relationship. Everything that I am doing now was because I was not happy in that relationship and I started searching for something. And all these things came up. So let's keep going. So what at this time, we're talking about spiritual self-analysis. There's something I have to write down. That's how important it is for me. And I have to start an analyzing myself. Like if you want something great and you're doing the same thing over and over again, it's like they say, they call that insanity. And we don't want to, you know, we all have a little crazy inside of us, but we don't want to keep doing the same thing over and over again. So let's keep going. I think that was really it. So what at the time no longer... Okay, this is the last one. What at this time needs to be eliminated from my life and what needs to be added to my life? Okay, that's the question. What needs to be eliminated? For me, again, it was a relationship that it wasn't serving me. It was 
I am a person who believes in love and it just serves my soul. I, I, I'm such a romantic person at heart. Like naturally, I romance myself all day. Like even when you see me doing my hair like this, this is just soothing myself. It might be kind of irritating. I always see me moving my hair around, but it's always like, <sighs> you know, it's just one of those things I'm just like always feeling on myself. I'm like, I love to be touched. And if there's no one there to touch me, well, hell, I'm going to touch myself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, like tweets say, I won't even sing the song anyway. The point is, the question again is, what at this time in your life needs to be eliminated? Something that needs to be cut off. And what in this time in your life needs to be added? Adding to me is the most sensual, delicious part of it because you get to add something that you think, I always want to know what it's like to take a line dancing class or I always want to know what it's like to go skydiving or whatever your thing is. That's something that you need to just stop talking about it. Go and be about it. Go and look up the class. So just recently, I've had um, a couple of close people to me who, you know, just wasn't doing anything special with their life. I'm like, what are you going to do with yourself? Oh, I'm waiting on a husband. Huh? What? Anyway, there are people who wait on husbands. But the person been waiting on a husband for their whole life and they're 40 now. So... That's how they worked out. Still unmarried, still no children, and they're still waiting for people. I have several women like that that I know. So they decided, they they listened to me. It's like, well, while you're waiting, you know what you can do? This will make them come faster. It's to start working yourself. Work on yourself. Go to school. Go take up a trade. And so they've taken up trades. And I just so applaud them. I applaud you because when you start working in yourself, the universe is opening up these channels to bring you more things to feel amazing about. When you work in yourself, you feel good about you. Your confidence level goes from a zero to a wherever, you know, five, ten, a million. But you're going to start vibrating at a frequency saying, I feel good about myself. I'm really doing something with my life now. And so when I started school, because I thought, ah, I'm over with school. I have enough degrees. I'm good. I love what I do. I love coaching and teaching. The universe came to me and said, no, you're going to go to school for, you know, you always love science. You're going to go to school to be a metaphysics. Uh, and, you know, a, meta a physician. And I was like, what? And God was like, yeah. And I was like, huh? And I was like, what? And I was like, okay. And then <laughs> and that's how everything worked in my life. When God told me I was going to open up a daycare to quit my job 13 years ago, I was like, huh? I don't even like kids like that. Jesus. And he was like, don't worry about it, girl. I got you. You're going to interview the parents. You're going to interview the children. You're going to call it a Christian daycare. You're going to feed them organic food. You're going to take them outside every day. Give them fresh air. Give them alkaline water. Don't give them medicine. And help the parents raise their children. And Because I've been raising my brothers and sisters my whole life. And when God told me that, I was like, huh? Okay, God, I trust you. Because I really want to leave this, this monkey race and this corporate world of you know, always having to be here at this certain time. I couldn't pee unless I'd logged out, all kind of craziness. I was like, this is not for me. And I decided when I, I watched a video called The Secret. If you guys don't know about it, you're already on YouTube. Just type in The Secret, The Secret, T-H-E, the word secret, The Secret, and watch the video. It will bless your life. It blessed me, and that's how I'm able to do what I do. Um, sitting here talking to you in my meditation room, you know what I'm saying? And still making money. <laughs> okay. So what you do is, I want you to still think about this last question. What at the time needs to be eliminated from your life and what needs to be added? What do you need to take away from your life that's not serving you? What do you need to add to your life that really will serve the higher good of the God self inside of you? I hope that helped you a lot. That is spiritual self-analysis. I did not want to make this video very, very long. But these things seem like I've gotten a lot of questions. And I wrote them down for myself. But now I'm like, I need to share them with other people. This one is um, scientific prayer treatment. They, and I'm actually studying right now. I'm on the computer and the laptop's right here. So this is some treatments. And a treatment is um, just an affirmation, basically. It's like an incantation. Okay, something that's different. An incantation is different than an affirmation as well. We'll go over that in another uh, video. But this one is called a scientific prayer treatment. It said, I am a child of the universe. 
my God, which is an intelligence both within and about me. I recognize in my mind this moment the omni the omnipotent presence of God's self of my mind. I identify my mind and myself with the universal mind and self within me. As the nature of my uni as the nature of my inner God intelligence. Constantly uh, eliminating old cells from my body uh, temple. Is that right, body temple? Oh, in my body to replace them with newer, healthier cells. So this same intelligence is guiding my life and replacing old ways of life and living with a positive new one. I have the complete faith that this is so. And for this I give thanks. And I do declare throughout my mind that this is so. And so it is. And God and good is in my, you know, good is in my life. You know what I'm saying? These are things that you want to tell yourself on a regular basis. Therefore, you can replace your old negative thoughts with new positive thoughts. These little cards will help you. You read them in the morning. You read them in the daytime. Anytime you're feeling kind of crazy and you will create your own. You know what I'm saying? I created mine because I'm studying and they give us a lot of prayer um, treatments is what they call it and affirmations that we can use on a regular basis and I love to share these with you because they are blessing my life tremendously okay so I did want to make this video very very long I did want to come on and share those particular things and um, I pray that this really really blessed you and that uh, don't forget to please click and like this video, subscribe, share it with people, and um, I hope I covered some things that will actually help, you know, get you going, because I want you to know how magnificent you are. We're not told that enough. We're not told how amazing we are as a holograph from God. We are holographs from the one and only God self. God is inside of each and every one of us. I wouldn't be here in this body if God didn't still have a plan for me and something that he wanted me to share with you. And something he wants, he wants to, I say he, but she, she wanted to express herself through me in the way that only I can express myself. Okay. So when you see me doing things that may, may, you may or may not like, that's not my problem. If you like it, you do. If you don't, I, I, that's not any way for me to care about it. I can only do what I want to do for me, whether people like it or not, not my concern. <laughs> so that's how you should be. You have to go and do yourself. Don't care about what your family say, your friends, your coworkers, your lover, your children. That does not concern you. Neither of them can live for you. Neither of them are going to die for you. You're going to do this all on your own. You have to do and serve yourself now. Remember those affirmations that I said. What needs to be eliminated and what needs to be added? That's the one that's really sticking out to me because a lot of people that I work with are still living for other people. They're still saying, Mona, but if I, if I don't want to be in a relationship more and I leave, that's going to hurt them. Well, people are going to get hurt. But if you stay in a relationship with someone who's not serving you, you're not serving them either. You're not serving you and you're not serving them. They can't move on and get the person they're supposed to with because you're still holding on knowing you're not supposed to be there. That's how I see my partner. And as much as it hurts me because I really thought that this person was my soulmate, I realized that a soulmate uplifts you. A soulmate makes you feel amazing. You feel like you're on a vacation every day just to be with them. You feel like you're growing. You are growing. You grow in um, things that you want to do together. You are Soulmates really get together and have um, a common bond. They have something in common that the universe wants the both of them to come together to manifest. That's powerful, isn't it? Because that's the truth. You're going to have some kind of way you're going to feel like you've known the person before. You're going to feel like... You know, this, I've known you. You're so familiar to me. You know what I'm saying? And that's when you know you've met your soulmate. And I'm going to go over the next video I'm doing because I didn't want to make this one too long. Is how do you know there are seven signs that will tell you if you have met your soulmate or not. Okay? And I wanted to go over those really quickly. Um, I think I may do it in another video because that will make the video kind of long. I had seven, but it ended up being nine. Let me say it's more than nine. It's actually nine. Okay. 
So um, I'll come on to the next video and make that all about that particular topic, okay? I pray this message finds you well. Now I'm gonna stay. Now I must go. Don't forget to click and subscribe. And subscribe to my channel. And if you have any um, questions, please write them down. I will respond to each and every one of them. If you have suggestions for videos, things you want to see, please let me know because I'm here to serve you. And I love what I do. Okay? Bye.